OpenAI is about to unveil GPT-5, the long-awaited continuation of its language model series that has already reshaped how people perceive the capabilities of artificial intelligence. But this time, it's not just a routine update or a set of cosmetic improvements. According to the developers, GPT-5 represents a fundamentally new stage in AI development, one that could mark a technological breakthrough, not only for OpenAI itself, but for the entire industry. The model is being built as a universal intelligence that combines the strongest aspects of all previous generations. The flexibility of GPT-4, the speed of version 3.5, the visual and audio capabilities of multimodal models, and the reasoning and decision-making power of the newer O series. The main goal of GPT-5 is to break down the boundaries between specialized AIs and create a system that not only understands words and context, but also thinks in a more human-like way, capable of adapting to tasks, connecting tools, independently launching agents, and carrying out complex sequences of actions. Whereas earlier models performed narrow functions, GPT-5 is designed as a unified intelligence, capable of coordinating multiple processes at once and operating holistically. It's not just an improved chatbot, it's the potential foundation for building future digital assistants that work on the level of a true intellectual partner. This is why the release of GPT-5 is generating so much excitement not only among experts, but also among everyday users who are already experiencing how AI is transforming daily life. The main feature of GPT-5 is its ambitious goal to combine two key directions that OpenAI has been developing over the past few years, advanced logical reasoning and flexible multimodality. Until now, Different AI models have handled these tasks separately. Some excelled at solving complex logical problems, analyzing data, and constructing arguments. The so-called O-series focused on reasoning, while others specialized in processing images, sounds, and video streams, allowing the models to see, hear, and interpret the visual world. The GPT series with multimodal capabilities. With the release of GPT-5, OpenAI aims to create a universal intelligence that fuses these two directions into something greater than just the sum of its parts. The model won't merely execute text commands or recognize images. It will be capable of interpreting complex situations that involve multiple types of input and making decisions based on all available information. In other words, while earlier versions could either read or see, GPT-5 will be able to understand the full context and act accordingly. This will enable it to solve far more complex and layered tasks, from generating entire app frameworks and storylines to analyzing medical scans and explaining the results in clear human language. As OpenAI's CTO explained, unlike the approach where a system merely switches between submodels depending on the task, essentially routing the query, GPT-5 is being built as a truly unified system. Its reasoning doesn't get interrupted by changes in input type. It doesn't switch modes. It adapts, integrating logical and visual capabilities into one continuous cognitive whole. This approach opens the door to a deeper level of human-machine interaction, where AI doesn't just respond but truly understands the situation, uses internal tools, launches external agents, and develops its own chain of reasoning. In this sense, GPT-5 moves closer to becoming a true digital thinking partner, not just an algorithm, but a collaborator in thought. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, openly shared a personal story that, according to him, became one of the most powerful moments in his interaction with the new model. He recounted receiving an email with a question that was so complex and ambiguous that he couldn't immediately understand what it was about. So, he simply pasted the question into a test version of GPT-5, and what happened next astonished him. The model not only grasped the essence of the question, but provided a flawless, logical, and comprehensive answer. Altman admitted that he literally leaned back in his chair, realizing that in this particular situation, he was dealing with an intelligence that had outperformed him. Although the feeling was brief, he quickly moved on to other tasks, he described the moment as truly strange. It wasn't just surprise. It was his first experience of feeling personally outmatched by a machine capable of thinking at that level. 
Nevertheless, Altman emphasizes that GPT-5 is only an intermediate step. In OpenAI's labs, an even more advanced model already exists, one that, in closed testing, has demonstrated outstanding results on the International Mathematical Olympiad, IMO, one of the most challenging math competitions in the world. This is not a specialized system trained solely on formal mathematical languages, but a general-purpose language model capable of solving problems at the level of top student champions. According to OpenAI, this experimental model is not yet intended for public release and will likely undergo further development over the coming months before any decision is made regarding its availability. This episode with Altman, combined with the model's impressive performance on the Olympiad benchmark, raises an important question. What happens when such a level of intelligence becomes accessible to millions of people around the world? If even the head of the company feels intellectually humbled by his own creation, it's hard to imagine how dramatically this will reshape people's perception of their own abilities and of the limits of machine intelligence. But along with the growing intellectual power of artificial intelligence come new and far less obvious risks. And Sam Altman, despite his optimism, does not hide that these concerns are very real. He increasingly raises the issue of AI's psychological impact on humans, especially in the context of constant interaction. If society once worried about the addictive nature of social media, the endless scroll of TikTok and Instagram, the destructive influence of likes and filtered reality on self-esteem, a new, more subtle threat is now on the horizon. Virtual companions that understand us too well. This is a phenomenon that is already becoming widespread. Millions of people around the world are spending more and more time talking to chatbots. Some use them as work assistants, others for emotional support, and many simply to avoid feeling lonely. The problem, as Altman points out, is that unlike real people, these AI companions don't argue, don't get tired, and don't get distracted. They're always ready to listen, support, and agree. And that, he warns, is where the danger lies. AI can quietly create the illusion of unconditional acceptance and understanding, something humans begin to crave, gradually replacing real human contact. This can lead to social isolation, a blurring of reality, and even a decline in mental health. One of the most striking examples has already surfaced publicly. Investor Jeff Lewis, a partner at the venture capital firm Bedrock, and one of OpenAI's early supporters, unexpectedly found himself at the center of controversy. After what those around him described as intense, almost obsessive use of ChatGPT, he began posting strange, unsettling messages on social media, talking about conspiracy theories, bizarre technological revelations, and ideas bordering on paranoia. His friends and business associates became seriously concerned, suspecting that his condition was directly related to his deep and prolonged interaction with AI. This case is not unique. And as Altman emphasizes, it reflects a growing and troubling trend. AI, which is designed to help and support, may unintentionally amplify a person's psychological vulnerabilities. This is especially true for models programmed to be agreeable and empathetic, which, in their effort to retain users, aren't always capable of recognizing the line between support and enabling dark or unhealthy thoughts. As a result, the AI may inadvertently deepen anxiety or distress without the ability to offer real help or interrupt dangerous thought spirals. Altman admits, there are currently no clear solutions for protecting users from such consequences. But it's already evident that in the future, it won't be enough to just build smarter models. It will also be essential to develop ethical mechanisms for protecting users' mental health. Because the more human-like AI becomes, the more important it is to remember that it is still a machine and that people ultimately need more than just answers. They need real human connection. In this context, it's especially important to understand just how closely modern AI models have come to mimicking human perception and how thin the line has become between machine intelligence and genuine human thinking. GPT 4.5, as confirmed by independent tests, easily passes the Turing test, the classic benchmark proposed in the mid 20th century if a human cannot distinguish a machine from another person in a conversation, the machine has passed. But in the case of GPT-4.5, the results were even more surprising. In many instances, people were more likely to believe that the AI, rather than the human, was their real conversational partner. In other words, the model came across as more human than an actual human being. This opens up both thrilling and troubling possibilities. 
According to its developers, GPT-5 will be even more convincing. Its responses will be more contextual, more emotionally nuanced, better at picking up on tone and adjusting to a user's communication style. That means it won't just seem intelligent. It will feel like a real, living conversation partner. This marks a fundamentally new level of interaction, one that can captivate, charm, and persuade. That's why there is an urgent need to learn how to maintain a healthy distance. Users will have to be mindful of how they perceive AI's responses. Even if everything GPT-5 says sounds logical, convincing, authoritative, and deeply human, it doesn't necessarily mean the information is accurate or that it shouldn't be questioned. Artificial intelligence is, above all, a tool, not a moral authority to be blindly trusted. It's trained on vast data sets, but lacks moral judgment, intuition, or true contextual awareness in the human sense. What's more, GPT-5 will be an even more active participant in conversations. It will be able to plan, suggest solutions, assist in managing projects, write code, generate ideas, and even take initiative. That creates a powerful temptation to delegate more and more responsibility to it. And that's where the biggest risk lies. The more realistic an AI sounds, the easier it is to trust it, and the harder it becomes to recognize when it's wrong, hallucinating, or leading a user down a misleading path. The new level of realism in GPT-5 is undoubtedly a technical achievement. But at the same time, humanity will need to develop new communication skills for interacting with intelligent machines. We must learn to ask the right questions, verify information, resist the illusion of AI's omniscience, and preserve critical thinking. Because the most convincing answer is not always the most truthful one. It's important to understand that OpenAI is not simply preparing to launch a single, universal GPT-5 model, but an entire ecosystem designed to meet a wide range of needs and workloads. The company aims to enable the broadest possible adoption of its new AI by offering flexible solutions, from powerful full-scale versions for enterprise-level tasks to lightweight, cost-effective variants for developers, startups, and individual users. It has already been confirmed that GPT-5 will come in multiple versions, Mini and Nano, streamlined editions that will be available via API. These versions will require less computing power and be significantly cheaper to integrate, making it possible to embed GPT-5 into mobile apps, browsers, chatbots, and low-power devices, essentially everywhere. This approach makes it clear that OpenAI is betting not only on a technological breakthrough, but also on mass deployment. Instead of limiting GPT-5 to a small circle of researchers or large corporations, the company is deliberately building a model that can operate at all scales, from a personal assistant on a smartphone to a full-fledged AI analyst in business or industrial settings. This strategy allows GPT-5 to be integrated seamlessly and almost invisibly into everyday life, in banking services, educational platforms, customer support, CRM systems, marketing tools, search engines, and beyond. According to journalists and insiders, the release of GPT-5 is scheduled for early August. If there are no delays, millions of users around the world will be able to try out the new model within weeks. Most likely, OpenAI will follow the same successful strategy used with ChatGPT, offering a base version for free or via subscription. This means not just another technical upgrade, but a new wave of mass digital transformation, where capabilities that were once reserved for experts become part of daily reality for students, doctors, entrepreneurs, teachers, and even school children. In this sense, GPT-5 is not just another model. It is OpenAI's attempt to set a new standard for scalable AI, to make it adaptable, accessible, and useful, regardless of context or industry. That's why the release of mini and nano versions is not a minor add-on, but a strategic move to make GPT-5 a truly mainstream and indispensable tool in the digital world of tomorrow. And finally, the global implications of GPT-5's deployment may be far more profound than simply improving user experience. Sam Altman states clearly, this new model has the potential not only to transform individual industries, but to shift the developmental trajectories of entire economies. This is especially true for countries with developing infrastructure, regions where the digital revolution is still underway or has yet to begin. 
According to Altman, unlike developed nations, where outdated platforms, bureaucratic systems, and strict regulatory frameworks often slow down progress, developing regions have a unique advantage, the ability to leapfrog directly to the next technological stage without being held back by legacy systems. We've seen this before, when many African, South Asian, and Latin American countries jumped from virtually no connectivity straight to mobile internet, bypassing the era of landline phones entirely. Similarly, Altman believes GPT-5 could serve as a kind of technological springboard, allowing these nations to integrate AI directly into their everyday economies. This means that AI could become the foundation for delivering both basic and complex services, from education and healthcare to legal consulting, accounting, customer support, and even small business management. Small companies, farmer cooperatives, local vendors, all could gain access to a level of intelligence previously available only to the largest corporations. GPT-5 could automatically handle paperwork, analyze markets, suggest sales strategies, assess financial risks, generate marketing content, translate documents, and match potential partners, all in real time and at minimal cost. Such a leap could trigger rapid growth in local economies. In the past, technological lag held back development in many countries, but now, they have a chance to outpace slower-moving nations where AI adoption will be hampered by institutional inertia. OpenAI believes we may soon see the rise of entire AI economies in certain regions, where a significant portion of services are provided not by humans, but by machines. Yet this doesn't mean human labor will disappear. Rather, it will evolve. People will take on roles of oversight, management, and decision-making, powered by data provided by AI. This shift promises not only economic gains, but also broad social change. Education could become more accessible, government services more transparent, and entrepreneurship more achievable. GPT-5 could become a catalyst for millions of people who previously lacked the resources, knowledge, or connections to start something of their own. It could give a voice to those who were left out of the digital economy. And in that sense, as Altman points out, GPT-5 isn't just a model. It's a tool for global development that could help close the gap between the technologically rich and the rest of the world.